Hi, in today's episode we're going to talk about how to design and laser cut this stained glass lamp. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my topic for today, this is the project, but my topic is really the creative process. Because I've had a lot of people ask me, how do I come up with ideas for my projects? And I thought this was a good example. Because it's really a combination of ideas that came from two other projects. My stained glass chapel, where I learned how to make stained glass using acrylic and a laser cutter. And my terrain hill here that I made in a variety of different materials. And one of them was this clear acrylic. And I really loved the way it looked when I put it together. And I said, you know, that's a, that's a nice idea I'd like to try somewhere else. So this came about as a result of those two other projects. I'm going to talk about how to design and laser cut it. I'm going to talk about another variant of the tree trunk here. And I'm also going to talk about how to troubleshoot problems that show up when you do something and it doesn't really turn out the way you expected it to. My original plan was to use the same puck lights I used in my other terrain items for this lamp. So I brought in the dimensions of that for the drawing. My vision for this lamp was that it would be a square lamp with extensions at the base to make it more sturdy. So I was drawing those sides, but I used a reference photo of a real tree to get an outline of a semi-realistic root at the base. I also used a photographic reference for drawing the bark. So I used this picture of a tree. I think that's a banyan tree. And as I showed in the stained glass chapel video, I used thick lines because then I could uh, do an image trace of it and get a drawing that looks like this. So the thick lines turn into the letting, so to speak, of my stained glass window. And I decided I would have two different colors of glass in this, kind of a gold and then a brown. I'm going to cut these sides in black acrylic, 3 16 inch black acrylic. And then I need to also cut the colored panels that go inside. So I did one sheet that contained all of the gold pieces and one that contained all of the brown. And then of course I need to cut four of each of those. The shade of my lamp, which becomes the, a stylized version of the canopy of the tree, is based on the process I showed in the terrain hill video. And I cut it uh, in two sections because they have to overlap one another and the most efficient way to get that overlap is by cutting it in this way. But I also do a test on a separate layer just to make sure that this is how it's all going to get, go together and is there space in the middle for the main part of the lamp to fit comfortably. I'm also going to cut four posts out of clear acrylic to hold the shade two inches up off the base of the lamp. These are the four sides of my stained glass base and I back them with masking tape so that I can then fit in all the pieces in the appropriate places. And this is the longest part of the whole process is putting those pieces in place. Then I use my fusing liquid and I tack weld all of the pieces in place. After about two minutes, they're fused. I strip off the masking tape, but you see there's still paper there that needs to be removed. I do that by putting it in a shallow bath of simple green. I let it sit for about 30 minutes, and then I remove the paper with the help of a wooden uh, chopstick. Here I am fusing the canopy of the tree or the shade of the lamp. And that's a pretty straightforward process. It looks pretty when it's done. I also cut a piece of mirrored acrylic that will fit into that top. And this will redirect the light from the lamp down onto the table and cut down on the glare that would come straight through the top of that clear acrylic. I use the outline of the base to cut a 1 8 inch clear acrylic to back the stained glass portions to make them more secure and I just fuse those in place on the back of each of the four sides. Then I do assembly, and once again, it's, I use the fusing liquid. I do one side at a time, and then I stop and I add the post. Now these posts are three inches long. They have an engraving line at one inch. So I'm gonna fuse one inch to the lamp and leave two inches extending up above, and that line helps me do this accurately. I'm also going to fuse one of those in the bottom as well because that also reinforces the structure 
of the lamp itself. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I never do things just one way. I always experiment with different options. And in this case, I did a wood version and I used the outline that I used for the clear to cut a green solid piece that I put behind it that's frosted uh, acrylic 1 8 inch on 1 8 inch birch plywood. I put the wood on with glue, but I still use fusing liquid to assemble the acrylic. And then it happened. I got everything together and I put the puck lights inside and it just didn't work. They weren't bright enough. I had to come up with plan B and this is what plan B looked like. This little light's gonna hold a one inch diameter acrylic tube. It's a box on the base. It's got three sides and a bottom, but it's open on one end. It's uh, gotta be small enough to fit inside the base of the lamp. So this represents the base of the lamp but big enough to hold a nine volt battery case. I had to go back to tech shop and cut the acrylic tube. And because I uh, learned from my green frosted sheet that I liked frosted better, we sandblasted the tube to make it frosted. This is the nine volt battery pack. And then here I am fusing together the base. This is the cool white LED strip and we're verifying that it works. We uh, measure off two feet of the lights, uh, so it goes up the tube once and back down again. We solder the connections, cover them with shrink tubes, and then shrink the tube, and that's all there is to the wiring. Turn it on and it works great. And then you just slide the battery pack into the base and it's self-contained. The light is much better than the puck lights. It's still not very bright. It's more like a mood lamp than a uh, task lighting that's for sure but I like the way it looks and here's the uh, other variant and I think that turned out really nicely as well. I think what this example shows is that my creativity comes from applying ideas I get in one arena to another different arena by combining ideas in unusual ways and that failure is an important part of the process. If you think my projects can help spark your creativity please subscribe to my YouTube channel.